that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> My name is Dr. Hughes, and I will be leading you all in this online course. So again, it's all online. We're never going to meet in person or on Zoom regularly. Um, I hold Zoom office hours. If you email me, I'm happy to chat with you. Or if you just want to email me in Canvas questions, I'm pretty quick to respond. But um, yeah, we don't really ever meet in person. It's all online. So um, most, most of you, I believe about 25 of you are, are enrolled in Chemistry 102, which is just the lecture section. And then five or six of you are enrolled in Chem 100, which has a lab portion as well. So I, unfortunately, this semester am not your laboratory professor. That'll be Dr. Knapp, and you will meet her next Wednesday when you uh, go to lab. Um, and unfortunately, I, have, I just my schedule couldn't work out. I would have loved to have, but so you'll be kind of piggybacking with culinary kids on their culinary labs, but it's, it's fun because then you get to eat and taste a lot of things uh, and see how, you know, ingredients affect different recipes. So anyways, all right, so... What you're going to learn this semester is this class is unlike a, any chemistry class you might have ever taken or uh, heard anybody else take. Uh, I really try to make this class kind of all about you and, and applicable to your everyday lives. Okay, so all I want to do kind of in this info session is take maybe 10 or 15 minutes and kind of walk through a little bit of the syllabus in the Canvas course page. Uh, and then I'll just open up the end for any questions that you might have uh, about the class or anything like that. So, okay, so let me share my screen. We'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I think hopefully most of you guys have logged into Canvas and checked out the class web page. But if you haven't, this is what it looks like. So this is the home screen. So you've got your home. Um, I have weekly announcements. Every week we'll start a new chapter. The chapters run one chapter a week from Monday to Sunday. Um, and so on the start of the week, I always try to post a video announcement, kind of introducing the chapter, uh, talking a little bit about maybe what I want you to focus on and some of the assignments that are due that week. Um, you can check your grades here. And then we've got the syllabus tab. So we'll go ahead and click the syllabus tab and I'll just kind of hit the highlights of the syllabus. Okay, so like I said, this class is all online, which means I've had pre-recorded lectures and other videos for you to watch. Um, and we don't ever really meet in person. So it's almost weekly pace, but there are deadlines you have to hit throughout the week. Okay. Um, Virtual, so office hours again, by appointment, you can email me in Canvas. Please do not email me in Outlook. I just have way too much junk in the Outlook folder. Uh, but the Canvas, if you come over here to the left side, you see there's the inbox and you can click on inbox and that's how you could draft an email to me uh, that way. So please email me only corresponding via Canvas inbox. And if you'd like to set up an appointment time, all you have to do is shoot me an email and we can make it work. I'm usually available. My Mondays and Fridays are fairly open, um, but Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, I'm usually available from 10 to noon and 3.30 to four. I can even push that to 4.30 uh, if needed. So um, those are usually when I'm available. If not, again, we can try to work something out and find a way that I can um, meet with you and answer some questions. Okay, so general course information, uh, what's required, the required materials, you're going to need to purchase the textbook, that's chemistry in context. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like, it might be backwards, I don't know for you guys. Um, the bookstore should have hard copies, you could also just use a digital copy and rent the digital copy as well. You're going to need a notebook, any notebook that you can take handwritten notes on. So if you want to use like a tablet that you like to jot handwritten notes on, that's fine. Uh, or a paper notebook is also fine, but you're going to be taking notes and uploading those weekly. Okay, so you need a notebook to write in. A calculator, because sometimes we'll crunch numbers. It's not that often. And we try not to let the calculations get too complex. Usually there's some formula to follow and it's kind of a plug and chug situation. Um, I prefer scientific calculators like the TI-30. You can just Google scientific calculator and see what it looks like. If you have a graphing calculator, you can use one of those as well. You can use your phone 
But uh, sometimes I just find my phone calculator to be really frustrating. I, I guess, I don't know, my old school that way. I like to like push the buttons on my calculator and then like see what it, what it all looks like. So you need a calculator at some uh, for the course. All right, your homework is going to be on Chem 101. So you'll need to purchase an access code for Chem 101. If you are waiting for your financial aid funds to come through, don't worry. Everybody has a two week grace period to access Chem 101 for free. After those two weeks are up though, then you either have to pay or uh, you can pay on Chem 101 with a credit card or you need to go to the bookstore and get the access code and type in your, um, your code from the bookstore into there. And if you are taking the lab, which is my Chem 100 students only, you're going to need to purchase, actually, I, that might be wrong. I don't think you have to do lab flow. Sorry, you don't need lab flow. That's a mistake because Dr. Knapp has her own experiments that are posted in your Canvas course shell. So I will update that. I apologize for that. Okay, that was for the fall students needed that. Okay, so there's some course objectives. I'll let you read through those. Again, I'm just trying to hit the highlights. Kind of what's going to be, what do I expect your time and effort for the course to be? You know, given it's all online, we don't meet in person, uh, you still should expect to work 12 to 18 ish hours per week. And that includes reading the text, reading the chapters, taking notes, watching the lecture shorts or some uh, supplemental videos to help really, you know, um, expand your understanding of a concept, uh, reviewing your notes and participating in assigned activities, which would be the infographic. So every week you'll get to have to generate an infographic. So there's kind of a little bit of an art or marketing. You can even sway it as marketing, advertising, uh, infographic about some content uh, concept in the chapter. And then also we'll have a weekly documentary for you to watch. And then we'll have a online discussion board I like to call it conversation. I want you to try to kind of keep it like a conversation between you and students as if we were in class and you could chat about the some of the stuff in the documentaries. Okay, so that's gonna take up about 12 to 18 hours out of your week. Okay, you can read through your required computer and dig digital literacy skills. How are you gonna be graded? All right, so 100% of your grade. Um, uh, let's see, 20% of your grade is going to come from your weekly notes, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. 25% um, of your grade is going to come from the homework that's on going to be posted on Chem 101. 25% of your grade is going to be on your documentary online conversation. That's the discussion boards, the discussions back and forth. And then 30% of your grade is based on your weekly infographics. Okay. If you are in lab, the CHE 100 students, all you have to do is complete every single lab that Dr. Knapp provides and at least have a passing grade of a 70%. The lab doesn't weigh in mathematically into your final grade. It's more of a pass fail. If you end up failing it, you'll have to meet up with Dr. Knapp and figure out how to um, you know, get rid of the incomplete, like what she'll ask you to do so that you can pass the lab portion of the class. Okay. All right, so let's kind of break these down. I'll talk about what I, what they'll look like. So Chem 101 homework, I'll save the notes for last because I want to go back to the home screen and kind of look at the notes. But so Chem 101 homework, uh, Chem 101 is just in like a website that you'll go to and you'll log in and it'll just say, you know, there's a homework tab and you'll just click on the homework tab and then it'll say chapter one homework and you just complete the homework. You get um, you're given two chances to complete the homework. So if you go through the first time, it's usually 20 to 35 questions uh, that covers, you know, concepts and the learning outcomes set for at the beginning of the chapter um, in the chapter that you're we're going through that week. Uh, but yeah, you'll get two chances. So if you get it wrong the first time, you can always try again to get the right answer. So that's the homework. Homeworks are due on Thursday of every week. So your notes will always be due every, on Wednesday of every week. So it'll be notes on Wednesday, homeworks due on Thursday. Your weekly infographic will be needed to, uh, turned in on Fridays. And then your, you can watch the documentary whenever you can throughout the week or maybe save it up for the weekend. And then you need to post, start your discussion board online conversation on Sundays. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Wednesday notes, Thursday homework, Friday infographic, Sunday discussion post. It's rinse and repeat every week. 
since it's online, I try to keep it really simple. Like we don't really change it up at all. That's what we do. Every Wednesday, something's due. Every Thursday, your homework's due. Every Friday, the infographics due. And every Sunday, you need to have posted to the discussion board. So you watch the documentary and I provide some prompts that I want you to kind of answer to start the discussion. Okay, so notes, I guess uh, we'll hold off on this because we're gonna jump back to the main screen and I can like give you a little more detail as I show you where all this stuff's kind of at. Okay, all right, so what, anything else in the syllabus? Again, I detail a lot of stuff it, for those uh, policies. Pandemic policy, if you are ill, again, this is all online, you know already in advance when everything is due. Your notes are due Wednesday, your homework's due Thursday, your infographics due Friday, and Sunday you have to post your discussion. So there's not really like a, oh, I got sick, I can't do it excuse, because you know that that's what's going on. Um, again, if you're really ill, like I can work with you, but for the most part, I mean, uh, there's not really like extensions on assignments. You can turn work in late and it will be penalized for being late. It's usually docked 10% every day. Those homework assignments on Chem 101, so it's kind of down in this late work policy here. So Chem 101, I can't provide extensions on the homework. Uh, so if it's not turned in by Thursday, unfortunately it's just a zero. Um, again, unless there's like some, like you're in the if you're hospitalized, right? We'll, we'll we'll work with you. There's a way to get around that, but for the most part, they can't. I can't really do extensions on the homework. Um, the notes, your weekly notes that are due on Wednesdays, those you just upload onto Canvas, so you can turn them in late, but they will be docked 10% every day late. And then if it's just more than three days late, they're just it'll be a zero. Like that's too late. You need to get those in on Wednesdays. Okay. And then again, the for kind of late work, if you're posting your documentary conversations, the discussion board posts late, every day it's late, it drops a letter grade. So whatever I would have graded it, if you turn in your post one day late, it'll be minus a letter grade. So if it was a B post, it would turn into a C post because it's one day late. If it's two days late, then it's two letter grades dropped in three days, it's just a zero. So I need you to really try to stay on the schedule of notes are Wednesday, homework's Thursday, infographics Friday, discussion is uh, your, um, your conversation posts are Sunday, due by Sunday. Okay. Um, yeah, so that kind of hits the highlights. So then what, what are we going to cover? And then again, we'll go back and look at all the chapter one stuff. So first week starts next Monday. That means you have today, tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday to get the access to the book, either purchase it, get a rental code, or if you're waiting for money to come in, try to see if you know someone else in the class, you can use their book for a couple of days because class starts on Monday. So your first set of notes are due Wednesday of next week. Right, and we'll be going over the very first chapter, which is portable electronics, the periodic table in the palm of your hand. So it'll kind of dissect your smartphones and talk about some of the elements that are in the smartphones and hit some other really big uh, topic um, thoughts like uh, cradle to grave or cradle to cradle. Like when we use our phone and you're done with your phone, I mean, think back how many smartphones have you gone through in your life so far? Probably more than one. Um, where do they go? Like, did you throw it in the trash? Did you recycle it at the store? And what what happened to all those pieces that are in it? Like all smartphones have some amount of gold in it. Where did that gold go? You know, not enough to get you rich, <laughs> but just enough to have uh, electronically do what it needs to do, right? Okay, so week one, next week, we do our periodic table in the palm of your hands. And then every other week after that, except for one, because I've also picked one other chapter from the book we're going to cover, which is chapter four about climate change, because that's probably one of the most pressing issues that our generation is facing and will face. So I've picked two chapters out of a possible seven, which means you guys need to pick the remaining ones that you want to learn about. Okay, so um, why so many to be determined? That's because I've chosen to, and I've created this survey called Choose Your Own Adventure. Um, so if you click on the survey, and again, this is also on the main home screen, here are descriptions of what 
each chapter covers. So chapter two is called The Air We Breathe. Chapter three is Radiation from the Sun. Again, we're doing chapter four, climate change, so that's not an option. Uh, chapter five is about water. Chapter six is about energy. Chapter seven is about alternative energy. Chapter eight is about storing energy. Chapter nine is about polymers and plastics. Ten is called brewing and chewing. Uh, Eleven is called nutrition. Twelve is called health and medicine. Thirteen is called genes and life. And fourteen is called who killed Dr. Thompson, a forensic mystery. So I need you to pick out of all these, you kind of read through and, you know, this kind of cover, gives you an idea of what's going to be covered in the chapter. I need you to pick your like top five that you think sound most interesting. And then when the class is done, this, this survey needs to be completed by Sunday. Uh, then I can lay out the rest of our semester, right? So the most popular top five chapters are the ones we're gonna look at. So you kind of get to help cultivate what we're gonna cover in this course, which is super fun because I don't wanna teach stuff that you don't care about or you know that you don't find interesting. So plenty of options here. Um, so pick your top five. Again, you can take the survey and you just click on the five ones that you wanna take. Um, and yeah, and then on kind of early next week, I should be able to give you the full schedule because I'll know what the five chapters we'll cover are at that point. All right, so I'm gonna click back on home real quick. That kind of covers the syllabus, right? So here in this very first module, it's the start here module. Again, I think some of you have already kind of looked over this. That's great. Um, if you just click on these pages, you can find out all the information. It kind of is broken down the syllabus. Like, are we going to meet regularly online via Zoom? The answer is no, we're not. It's an online course. Um, what do I need for the class? That's required materials. How do I access the ebook if you, you know, from the bookstore? So that walks you through how to access your ebook. This walks you through how to access Chem 101, which is the homework platform, and I'll show you that in one second. How do you contact me, right? That's going to be through Canvas email only, not Outlook. So email me in Canvas. Again, I respond fairly quickly. Um, what am I going to learn? How am I going to be graded? Is there a penalty for turning things in late? What's required technology, technological wise? This is a need help technical support. And then here again, by Sunday, you should complete the syllabus quiz, which kind of lets me know that you have an idea of what's going on in the class, what's kind of expected and what we're gonna do. And then the choose your own adventure is the pick the five chapters you find, you think would be coolest and most interesting to cover because you wanna learn more about that stuff. Okay, the next module right here is the Chem 101. So when you get the access code uh, from the bookstore, again, that's if you purchase it from the bookstore, you can also just use a credit card in Chem 101. That's another option. Um, but you, to get to Chem 101, you need to click on this link because the Chem 101 is linked to the Canvas page. So you would click here to link um, to Chem 101 and it's gonna, and it's gonna say, uh, Click here to access it. You need to load it in a different browser. This brings me up to a really important point is that I'm on my MacBook and I'm in Safari. And yeah, Safari actually doesn't work with Chem 101. So you need to use either maybe Google Chrome or Firefox to be able to open up Chem 101. So let me switch real quick to my Firefox. Share. And I actually go there fairly often, so you'll probably kind of see more of the instructor uh, look at it. But once you click on that link, it should bring you, and you're in a Chrome or Firefox web browser, it should bring you right up to this page where it's going to ask you to, to create an account, right? So because you probably have never used Chem 101 before. So you type your name, email address, and you say, like, click to create an account. Um, it can ask you for an access code, but again, if you don't have it, it's okay because everybody has a two week grace period. Um, so you can use it kind of as a trial. If you're unsure if you're gonna stay in the class, right? Don't pay for it yet, you don't need it. Um, but once you get into Chem 101, I'm gonna go to student view. So you, it's more like, I see what you see. Um, so here's kind of what the main homepage looks like. So you've got these tabs, class, homework, quiz, and practice. Again, the homework will be found under the homework tab. I haven't created or published the homework yet, so nothing's right here right now, but next uh, Monday you'll see chapter one homework and you'll just click on that and that's how you'll access the homework. 
Um, we don't have any quizzes here. Sometimes I can post ex extra practice problems for you to work if you really want. But again, um, it's really just the homework is due and the homework grade from Chem 101 will just be moved directly over into Canvas. So you'll see it kind of auto, you know, populate the grade in your grade book, whatever your average homework grade is from uh, Chem 101. Okay, so let me jump back to our Canvas page real quick. Okay, so that is, I'm gonna click home button. If you ever get lost in Canvas, just go back to home, right? Um, all right, so that's where again, you'll always to access Chem 101, you just click there. And then here's what every chapter is gonna have this same kind of a layout in Canvas. So I've got the introduction, I've got learning outcomes, and then I've got what I call the Hughes views. These are my recorded lecture shorts and extra videos that cover content in the chapter. And then you've got the chapter assignments. So again, you've got your notes, the homework, which there's nothing for you to do on the homework, like on this button, like it doesn't take you really anywhere. You just need to go, please complete the chapter one homework on Chem 101 under the homework tab, right? So that's where you would go for that. Um, go back real quick. Uh, and then we've got the infographic and then the documentary discussion board. And this week, next week, sorry, not this week, next week, the documentary we're gonna watch is called The Story of Plastic. Um, and normally these documentaries are gonna be on Netflix or Hulu. So I find most students actually have access somehow to Netflix. So I try to find ones on Netflix. Um, but again, this is kind of in the syllabus survey. I kind of ask you, uh, do you have access to Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime? Doesn't necessarily have to be you as like a family member. Like, can you access it? Can some, would somebody share their login? Or do you know somebody on campus that could share their login or wants to sit with and watch like a one and a half hour documentary with you? You know, something like that. This week, though, the documentary is not on Hulu, Netflix, uh, or Amazon Prime, it's actually this link right here below this MP4 file. So uh, it's uploaded into Canvas for you because it was no longer free. So the college, we bought it and we bought the license so that we could play it. <laughs> so you can access the this first documentary next week on Canvas itself. Okay, so let's talk about the notes, the weekly notes. Okay, so I'm gonna start right here with the chapter introduction and then I'm just gonna kind of page forward so you see what the chapter introduction pages always look like. So this is like the welcome, here we go. Take a moment to watch the opening video for chapter one. So there's usually always an opening video that kind of gets you, um, I don't know, it's like a teaser for the information found in the chapter. Sometimes I just want you to think about something. So this is like reflect on this. And then here's the compelling questions. This is kind of like what is gonna be covered in this chapter? So chapter one, they're gonna talk about what are the different components in your portable electronic device made from? How does a periodic table of elements guide us in designing your device? What are rocks? How do we isolate and purify metals? So on and so forth. So this is kind of the topics that are gonna get covered. So every chapter in Canvas will have this kind of an introduction page for you to like think about. Sorry, I'm trying to click next. The next page is the learning outcomes. Okay, so this is when you're reading your book and you're taking your notes that I want you to be taking notes on the learning outcomes. So this page is important for that. So you have your notebook sitting in front of you and you're going to provide answers to all of these learning outcomes. So like the very first one says, classify and compare the four states of matter, SLQP, which stands for solid, liquid, gas, uh, oh, that's a BG, sorry, uh, gas and plasma. And it's found actually in section 1.1. It even tells you where this information's at, right? So I need you to take notes on comparing or classifying and comparing those four states of matter. And then in addition to the notes, I want you to complete the your turn activity that's on page four, right? So that would all be under this, maybe you wanna label this number one, like learning objective number one, and you write classify and compare the four states of matter. And then you have your notes under it. And then you have the answer to the your turn 1.4. Then you draw like a number two, you circle it, right? And then we're looking at our second learning outcome, which is, you write it, right? Indicate the location on the periodic table of metals, non-metals, and metalloids, and predict some of these things, blah, 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 blah. So 
If it says indicate the location on the periodic table of metals, non-metals, and metalloids, there's a picture of the periodic table in your book for sure, but you can just do a quick rough sketch outline of kind of the periodic table and just show kind of where the metals are, where the non-metals are, and where the metalloid compounds fall on that like quick sketch. It doesn't have to be totally perfect, <laughs> but um, if you, you know, these are like handwritten notes too. Also, again, for this learning objective, you need to complete the year turn 1.3. Uh, so that's how I want you to be taking your notes. So your notes aren't just like uh, notes from the entire chapter. Your notes are more guided. And I want you to be answering these learning objectives. Okay. All right. So that's for that. And there's usually 7 to 12-ish learning objectives for every chapter. Okay. All right, and then that brings me to the Hughes views. So these again are either videos that kind of the book has provided. So this book is uh, written uh, as a project from uh, the American Chemical Society, ACS. It's, a, it's a, the biggest you know, chemical uh, group in the, in the US. We actually have an ACS chapter here on campus that some of our students are involved in, uh, but they also do generate some of these, some videos. So some of these videos are from the American Chemical Society. Others are just ones that maybe I've done. So here's an example, the four phases of matter video. This is me lecturing the four phases of matter, right? Um, elements, compounds, or mixtures. This is a video of me lecturing about that. So in lieu of you sitting in the lecture hall, again, I've got kind of these lecture videos here. Here is, so anything with this reactions this R, Reactions is the American Chemical Society video uh, group. Uh, they're really good. So this is just a video about the race to invent the periodic table. And then look, we got another me lecture. Then you've got the uh, reactions about what's in your smartphone. So again, like these videos, it's not required that you have to watch them all, but they definitely will help you with the answer the learning objectives give you that feel for being in the class. And then just to have like these reaction videos just have really cool information in them. So I suggest you watching them, uh, you know, for sure, at least all the reaction videos, because because those are those are just fun. OK, but then again, all these I have my lectures to help with the learning objectives. So videos are there if you're a lecture person. Maybe you just need to read and you get it. That's cool, too. Right. Um, all different learning styles and that's OK. But that's what the, is going to be in the Hughes views uh, of every module for the chapter. OK. So just kind of to reiterate, again, every chapter is going to have its own module. You've got the introduction, which kind of gets you thinking about what that chapter is going to cover. You've got the learning outcomes. This is what I want you to, you know, number and take your notes on uh, and fully answer those learning outcomes as, to as much detail as you can. Uh, and then you always are going to have the Hughes views, which are the videos and the pre-recorded lectures I have about the content in the chapter. Then you'll see chapter assignments every week, rinse and repeat. I can't emphasize it enough. Notes are Wednesday, homework's Thursday, infographics Friday, documentary discussion boards due Sunday. Okay. If you want the infographic this week, you're going to create an infographic of any element from the periodic table that you want. You can pick a crazy one or you can pick one that you might have, you know, talked about like oxygen, hydrogen, you know, ones you know, or you can pick Einsteinium, antimony, uh, something that you're like, what is that? And just learn more about it. And you'll generate an infographic. And I've got some pretty detailed um uh, uh, points in there of things that you can include that I want you to include. And I'll try my best to put videos in the directions of these, of the notes and the infographics and the discussion, the documentary uh, stuff of like how you're gonna, how, what I'm looking for grade wise, like what an A, what an A note would look like. People that are gonna get an A on the notes have these characteristics. People that are gonna get like a C are gonna have these characteristics. People that are gonna get an F on the notes just didn't probably turn it in or they barely did anything besides write the learning outcomes. You know, like they put no effort into the notes. So uh, it'll give you an idea of like maybe, you know, how do I get an A for the notes? Um, how do I get an A on this infographic? How do I get a B? How do I just pass this class? <laughs> like, what do I need to do just to pass? You know, it'll give you that idea. Okay, so with that said, that's kind of, I hope that kind of helps kind of walk through what it's going to be like. Again, every week we just do a new chapter. Please, 
at the top up here in our very first module. Don't forget to finish this, read over the syllabus full, completely. Again, all of these different pages kind of break up the syllabus in little chunks. Um, if you, uh, again, need to figure out how to access the ebook, you have to get the code. Well, I mean, you probably could find it online, but uh, you can purchase the an access code for the virtual copy of the book from the campus bookstore. And then this link will show you how to access that book from the campus bookstore code. Here's how you create your Chem 101 count and how you can, you know, click on that link and then go over into Chem 101. Again, make sure that you're either in Chrome or or Firefox, it won't work in Safari on a Mac. Unfortunately, they say they're working on it, but they've been working on it for a year and a half now. So I guess they're still working on it. <laughs> and then don't forget to make sure by Sunday night, also you choose your own adventure. So pick those top five chapters that you're interested in because you guys are gonna help design, you know, the rest of the course, like what we're gonna cover. So with that said, that's kind of all I have. I am going to stick around. If you have any questions, just feel free to kind of unmute yourself. Um, I guess I can pull up the chat box too. If you would rather type a question, I can look at the chat box. Here it is. Um, and other than that, if you have no questions, again, you can go to the bookstore, make sure you get uh, access to the book. You get Chem 101. Again, you do still have, you have a two week trial, so you don't have to purchase it right away. Um, and that you read through the syllabus this weekend and answer the syllabus quiz. And also don't forget to choose your own adventure. Pick the top five chapters that you think sound the most interesting. All right, but if no one has any questions, you're free to go. And again, I'll stick around. Um, you can either chat me a question in Zoom or you can unmute yourself and ask aloud. Ah, okay, so question is, what is an infographic? Would it be a poster every week? So excellent. All right, so if we click on this infographic uh, for chapter one, so this chapter infographic um, talks about, again, you get to pick, so the very first chapter introduces the 117 elements of the periodic table. You have to pick one and generate an infographic. So what is an infographic? They are graphic visual representations of information, data, and or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly, okay? So I have some examples of what in, some infographics that are even chemistry related. Here's the thing about infographics. So they're information graphics, right? Infographic. They usually, I have a template you can use. Um, my template, I believe, is 11 inches by 17 inches. But again, they are heavy on graphics and visuals and not wordy. Like, don't be putting paragraphs of text in an infographic because they need to be quick and relay that information quickly. So here's some examples of infographics. Um, I don't know. Let's see. What's the chemistry of gunpowder? Oh, that's probably going to open it separately. Yeah, that opened it separately. Um, if I click on this little guy, though, it should open it within the page. So here is, and a lot of these, so the chemistry of gunpowder. So notice right away, like it's visually appealing. It's got big numbers. It's not super wordy. So gunpowder, you could read and you're like, oh, look, it's got charcoal, salt, petra, sulfur. Uh, the energy density of it is three megajoules per kilogram, right? It's got some data. So these are what infographics are. So for your infographic, for your um, element that you want to pick this week, right? You can have like a picture of what the element looks like in its natural state. You, again, I give you some prompts to answer, to consider. So ideas for your infographic. So uh, what's some background and basic information? What's the element's atomic number, atomic mass number of protons, neutrons, electrons? If that, if that sounds like gibberish right now, don't worry, those things are covered in chapter one. <laughs> um, maybe you wanna say, what's the history? Like you can have a picture of whoever founded the element and like a brief one sentence, two sentence of like, it was founded in a basement or, you know, right? I don't know, whatever. It was found in a lab. They created this in a lab. Um, maybe where it's located, you have a picture of a globe with a continent pointed out, I don't know, right? Heavy on graphics, not so much text. So again, so you can look about some of these things. Um, what are three to five uses of the element? You should include this for sure. So what's that element used in? And then like what now is, um, 
you know, here's some things, other things to consider in your infographic. You don't have to include all, every single one of these bullet points in your infographic. It's just really good ideas for what you need to, what you should consider putting in your infographic. So I hope that answers your question. Again, I should have a video. I'll probably put the video. So at the bottom here, it says grading, what's my professor looking for? That's where I'll have a little video of me talking about, you know, like what I, what I hope to see in these infographics. So that even should help direct you more into what I'm looking at. And here's the template you can download. It's in PowerPoint. So you could just create it in PowerPoint. You could also use an online infographic, like a generator helper thing. So uh, that is possible. Okay. Um, is it uh, more beneficial to get an online copy of the textbook or get a hard copy of the textbook? That's a good question. That just depends on um, your style. I lately have been more cool with reading things on my phone. <laughs> so I don't mind reading um, information digitally. Some people don't like that. Some people just like the paper copy. It doesn't matter either way which one you get. With the this textbook in particular, uh, the online copy, it's kind of lame because you have to like click the next thing if you like to go to the next page. You can type in the page number you want at the top, um, but I don't know. I almost like I don't know, right? I, I like flipping the page on that one. It's not like a it's a good scrolling book. I like books that you can scroll on your phone. Uh, I guess that's what I like. Not ones that are like an individual page you have to page over on my phone or computer. And this book, at least my copy of the electronic version is one where you have to like turn the page, like click next. So it's not just like a solid text box I could be scrolling up and down, but that's my preference. So it's really just up to your student preference of what you like to do and what you like to use. Ah, okay, the cam scanner app. All right, excellent. So no, I did not discuss it and I can discuss it. Um, uh, that one more question though before that is there a specific site or software to make the infographics I have the template you can use for PowerPoint and again I don't know of any there are online ones out there for sure students have turned in ones that I can tell weren't made in PowerPoint like they're very they're just different and they look great um, so they're using some online something but that's up for you to google and find if that's the route you want to take I don't really have something uh, an online, you know, infographic helper generator uh, for that. But um, I do have the PowerPoint one. So you can use, you know, it's whatever was going to work for you. Okay, did you discuss the cam scanner app? Okay, so cam scanner, where's my phone? All right, so when you take your notes, if you don't have like a tablet that you're handwriting your digital notes on, and you're using actual paper on a notebook, um, I need you to still upload those notes into Canvas. And so one thing you can do is you can download this app and it is called oop, Cam Scanner CS. And what it does is it uses your smartphone's uh, camera and allows you to take a, like scans your paper into PDF. So you'll like scan each page of your notes and it converts it into a PDF and then you can email that PDF to yourself or um, I don't think you can directly upload it onto to Canvas, but hey, I don't know these days anymore. Nothing, nothing, uh, uh, make, nothing makes me, I, what am I trying to say? Nothing surprises me anymore. There it is. <laughs> um, but so Cam Scanner, yeah. So if you download it, you can just play around with it. It's pretty user intuitive. Um, like when you open it up, this is like the screen and there's just this button at the bottom. Sorry, there's such a bad glare, but it's got a camera. And if you just click on that, that's already gonna, that's how you can start to do your scans of your notes. So it's in scan mode and he'll just, you can also, it's got a multiple pages button. So if your notes are more than one page, you're gonna wanna click multiple pages and then you can just keep scanning your notes and then upload that file. The app is free. There's a free version. It does not cost anything. So get, I mean, you could always pay more for the upgrade, but um, the free version will do you just fine. You oh, also could use- I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, you also could download whatever app that you want that can convert you know, your paper into a PDF or uh, into an image file. It doesn't have to be Cam Scanner. That's just one I found that was free and that I used. It was easy. Um, so for me, I download the app for free, but it says 
Um, it's free for three days, and then it's sixty dollars after that. No. Yeah. What? Yeah, it says fifty nine ninety nine per year. So I didn't know if that was just me. I... I'm trying... Wow. Um, man, I'm. I mean, I'm pretty sure mine is still free. Let's see. Where's the? Wow, this is crazy. Um. Man, 60 but don't pay $60 straight up. <laughs> I would say don't even pay $5. Like there's going to be something free uh, to do. So um, is there any other app that you would recommend us looking into? Because um, that, that one just tried to charge my credit card $60. So I'm what? See, I didn't even do put, that. I didn't put my credit card information in. Um, let, I don't know. Let's go to the. I can let me look. Well, is there any other questions come? Oh, look, here we go. Genius Scan is what I have been using. It's free as well. So there's another one, Genius Scan, G-E-N-I-U-S Scan. Um, so try Genius Scan too. Again, like uh, you could probably Google free uh, scanning app uh, and I don't know, iPhone or free scanning app, Android and see what, I'm sure there's like best five scanner apps and I had, that's kind of where I found cam scanner, but yeah. So genius scan also looks like it's another option from another student. Thank you, Hannah, for the. Um, you can also scan documents if you have an iPhone on the notes section, um, on like your notes on your iPhone, there's an option to scan documents and you can scan it on there. Nice. Okay. Any other questions? Feel free to type them in the chat or you can yeah, unmute yourself. Like I said, so almost chapter one's completed. Again, I, I'm gonna try to make a little video this week, maybe even on Monday next week. Um, tomorrow and Monday, I'm gonna try to make these little videos and like put plug them into these assignments. So you should also see little videos in the directions of, of me talking of like, you know, what I'm looking for um my thoughts on what you should how you should you know tackle this all right but i don't feel like there's any other questions guys if you come up with any questions um just again feel free to email me via canvas so just go over in canvas to that little inbox tab and you should be able to you know create an email I can't do it in student view, but yeah, create an email and you should be able to type my name, Amanda Hughes. It should pop up. Uh, and sometimes you can just email straight from the course. I, I mean, I've had students already starting to email me. I know it's possible <laughs> and I bet you can figure it out, but feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, and yeah, other than that, you guys all have a wonderful day and thanks so much for signing up for a super fun chemistry class. Uh, I'm excited that you guys chose chemistry instead of, well, as one of your two options uh, over maybe physics or geology, probably, or biology. I don't know, right? But so we're going to have fun. You guys are going to learn some fun things. All right. See, see you later. Yeah. Good night. Take it easy.